guys. Two Fluent here. Hello, everybody. This is Lewis, also known as Two Fluent. I have a treat for you today. I have a sorcery contestant rum artist, my favorite artist of all the artists on sorcery right now. It is Truett. Truett, why don't you introduce yourself to the folks? Hey, everyone. My name is Truett. Um, as he said, I am a sorcery artist. Um, I'm just happy to be here talking to Lewis. Very good. All right. So I do have a few questions that I'm going to be touching bases on getting to know you a little better so our audience can also know you a little better. Uh, and then we'll start talking about a little bit of some events that are going on, some tournaments that are actively playing as of today, March 16th, as well as they're coming up in the future. So my number one question is, um, how long have you been painting? Because you're you're kind of a young guy. How old are you, Troy? Uh, I'm 28 right now. 28. So okay, and then you've been painting for how long then? Um, I've been doing art since I was a little kid. I haven't been painting oils as long. I started painting oils in college, so I guess say about 10 years. I've been painting, um, but I've been drawing for my whole life, 20 years. Yeah, over okay. 20 years. So that's cool. I know you mentioned oils. And um, so I, I do a little painting myself, nothing too crazy. Uh, but I've been painting myself for a few years, and I paint acrylics. Actually, I paint acrylic backgrounds, landscapes, and some some uh, silhouette-type paintings. And the reason why I chose acrylics is because I tried oils, and I was so horrible, I was so bad at oils. So uh, it's not not through lack of effort. It's just it's a whole other effort. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people kind of um, think of painting as like one thing and, you know, think of acrylics and oils as very, very similar. But for me, definitely, they're very different. I'm kind of the opposite. I've painted with acrylics and I found them to be really, really difficult. Um, so my my dad was actually a painter and he used oh oils. And so he kind of, uh, he preferred them and he talked them up a little bit. So when I got into the painting, that just kind of was the path that I took. Um, and I like them because you can, you can mix the colors while they're on the canvas. So, or I, I paint on board while they're on the board. So like uh, you can get softer edges and you can blend colors a little bit more accurately. And for acrylics, they just dry so fast that I, it seems like they're hard to control for me. Interesting. I mean, they do they do dry obviously a lot faster than oils. Um, I find them to be uh, a little easier to blend when I was working with oils. I could muddy up the color if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, pretty easy, you know. If you're trying to go for uh, a gray and you don't mix it right, you end up with like a brown. I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Um. So, what are your favorite subjects that you like to paint? Um, I think that kind of varies just based on my interest a lot, but usually I like anything that tells a story. So any okay. type of narrative. Um, I think when you paint enough, everything ends up just being shapes and light and shadow. And so like, as far as subjects, it's hard um, to really get excited about something unless it kind of touches you in like a personal way. So like, I just like moments of action usually. So a lot of my paintings are something's about to happen. And I just like the story, um, especially the stuff I did in college. You know, a lot of these commissions are, are pretty specific on like whatever the client wants. But I like it when you can tell something's about to go down. Certainly. And the pieces that you did uh, for Alpha and Beta, I think uh, lots of those pieces, you can really say something's about to go down. So uh, you had... Uh, Jihad and Crusade, which was uh, basically two armies amassing and charging in. You also had the Highland Clansmen, uh, and they're in full battle mode, ready to, ready to throw down, so to speak. Uh, but even your more uh, subtle one, like uh, let's say Border Militia, uh, you know, that tells a, a narrative in itself because uh, something's about to go down. You're not seeing the action. It's not like a full swing. People are not necessarily... Uh, attacking or, or a full charge but they're all they're amassing and they're they're yeah. they're all walking towards the village edge and you know they're about to go to war so it's, it tells yeah. a story uh of something yeah. imminent about to happen yeah i think in general even when i get like specific 
uh, assignments from a client or something, I, I can kind of figure out a way to tell a story within it. So it, it's easy for me to get excited about almost anything because I'll figure out a way that I want to portray the piece and then I'll be able to get excited about it in that way. Okay. So talk to me about how Eric actually found you because Sorcery Contessa Realm seems to be your first, let's call it kind of big project, uh, if you will. Um, I know you have an artist station. Uh, did he find you through your artist station? Yeah. Yeah, he did actually. I, I always say that I, I just got so lucky, you know, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't very good at promoting myself. I don't think I am still very good at promoting myself. Like I'm not on social media a lot. Um, I'm not very good at just recording art and putting it out there. Um, but I did a little bit and it was just enough to, uh, it was just enough to catch Eric's eye. So that was good. Okay. And he, he contacted me through email, the email that I had on there and just asked me if I could do a couple pieces. So, okay. And what I have up for the folks is actually put up your artist station. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen, your screen, but, uh, Yes, you have this artist station now. Uh, do you have any originals left of this collection that are still available for purchase? Um, yes, I do actually. Um, a few of them have been sold. Yeah, and a few of them are being held on to for uh, for Eric actually. So, oh, okay, interesting. So I don't look at. Well, we we won't spoil the beans too much, but. Apparently, there's uh, some pieces here that Eric has fancied he might use in future work, though. Yeah, and he he didn't tell me what his plans were, and he didn't he didn't say he was for sure going to use them or anything. But um, he did contact me about a couple of them, and I don't think he wants me to point them out. But he did say that it's okay to display them. So uh, yeah, a couple of those might show up somewhere else. We'll see. Okay, very interesting. Cool. Yeah. Alrighty, so uh, another question I have is. Have you actually learned how to play sorcery the card game yet? I have started. I've started. I haven't finished. There's a lot of rules. It gets pretty complicated. I need, I think I need someone to play with to help me out a little bit. But uh yeah, I've been watching some of the events um and I've been reading through my handbooks that I got from Eric. So um I'm getting there. My goal is to learn good enough to play at the Courtesan Cup. Probably not, you know to a high level but i want to at least play a couple games you know i'm, I'm excited because i can use my own cards that's going to be fun you're like ah that's oh my, yeah seems like a power move i don't know <laughs> okay so you you've gotten some cards then so you open up your own your first packs and all that mm -hmm. okay. yeah very cool so what do you think about the uh just the art in general yours and other folks i mean is it really showing well on the cards you think yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I I uh, didn't realize how big of a variety. Like I knew how many artists were working on it, but it's like, you know, every other pack there's something I haven't seen. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Um, okay. So, and there's a bunch of different styles, and I think it's really valuable because you can kind of learn from what other people are doing, and you know, they have strengths that I might not have, and it's it's just a really good way to get a lot of variety that you might not generally see yeah that. i'd say alpha and beta the art is, is very varied the styles are different um mm -hmm. there's oddly enough there's there's a cohesiveness to it you know i mean there is some similarity in the themes um you know there's there's pirates uh, there's gnomes um there's knights so there's a little bit of a theme behind it it's very a uh, uh, fantasy based game um mm -hmm. when you see when i see it all in a binder it it's clearly all sorcery like oh yeah that sounds out of sorcery but yes all right. the artists are, are pretty distinct in their style of, and and their execution on the, on the works totally yeah 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 i think it's really cool that i mean i think eric did a really good job of bringing variety but also bringing i don't know like a uniqueness to it's like it like you said it's all cohesive you can tell that it's a sorcery card but you can also tell that someone else worked on this piece versus this other piece, which is really amazing. I think. Okay. It seems like a hard line to walk for sure. So, um, 
today I was actually watching some of the games for uh, March of the Mortals uh, that Drew from On right. the Play put up. And uh, he commissioned you to do uh, the prize for that. And so I've seen it, and it's fantastic. Um, lots of stuff going on. Very, I mean, very you, lots of action for sure. And um, yeah. so, you know, just did you have fun uh, doing it? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, I sent him, I remember I sent him a lot of sketches. Um, and we kind of both like this one. I called it stacked bodies because it was just a bunch of bodies just on top of each other. And right. so I ran with that one. And we had a lot of uh, back and forth. I think he said this at the uh, interview at March of the Mortals, but we had a lot of back and forth and he wanted some specific things. And I thought some, some elements would look cool. And so we kind of settled on that one and I think it turned out well, you know, so. Okay. You know, um, I, now I, I've, uh, I've collected enough of your works that when I, when, when I first see it, uh, it's funny because if you if you would have not told me that this was done by you, I would have known. So yeah. there's definitely a very much Truett Parish style, and um, you know you're you're great at these battle sequences, and but but I've come to know you also for a very particular palette of using green, mm. brown, red. Um, you use obviously some of the colors, but those those colors are very prominent in your pieces. And what I like about them is, mm. is I, I like it because there's there's some contrast there. They really pop. When you put red next to green, you know, two kind of opposing colors in the spectrum mm. of colors, and they, it makes it really pop. But it's not like overly mm. saturated with so many different colors. And and just that limited palette style and, and your and your brush strokes that you can definitely see in the paintings. You have a very unique style. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, it's born partially out of like working on getting a style and partially out of just kind of what came about naturally, I think. Um, and I, I like what you said about the palette. I, I really like painting in red, but I think it gets overbearing uh, really quickly. So um, I do tend to do a lot of red, especially for like important characters um or something that the eye should be focused on and then also like you said the complement of green it just works really good if you have a red you know character or whatever the green makes everything pop out so okay so i was pretty uh spot on would you say on my evaluation that it's, it's intentional the colors are used but... yeah for the most part um Sometimes you kind of have to lean to different colors just to make the piece work. Right. You know, it's not always going to be like, you know, I really love this color, so I'm going to paint with it. Um, sometimes it, this thing has to be blue or this thing has to be red, you know. But uh, I do have a certain palette um, and I have specific colors that I like working with um, because they mix well or they mix at least realistically. Um, so that tends to just make my palette limited. And since it's a limited palette, it will kind of always have the same vibe to it. Maybe not exactly the same look, but it should be very similar. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the background, can't see them too well, but I do have a collection of uh, your artist proof. That yeah, is the, the number one series from uh, Alpha. And uh, very like proud, it. you know, front and center of my collection. Uh, do you still have any artist proofs left? I do. Um, I'm slowly running out, especially of Jihad and Crusade. Okay. Everyone's trying to get a Jihad and a Crusade. Um, but I have some, and I'm kind of trying to, like, hold on to a few uh, just in case I need them for something special. Um, but... Yeah, I'm definitely more than halfway through. Um, I have about three sets that I'm working on now that aren't really for anyone. I think when I finish them, they'll probably go to Collector Art House, or I might keep them around for you know my own sake. I don't know, but I'm trying to get them just wrapped up basically. So I have a, a few proofs that I'm 
holding on to that I can use. Okay, well, that's cool that you keep it on to, to some pieces. I know Mike from mm -hmm. Collector Art House is, is a good avenue. Uh, definitely gives you a lot of exposure. He does have a good, uh, rather large following um, in the source community that that are really kind of after the art uh, and the APs. Uh, so it's, it's it's pretty good team up, uh, giving him some, some product. Um, are you taking on any commissions directly right now? Um, yes, but uh, I have some projects already in the works. So I would do commissions. Um, I just have to let whoever wants the commission to know that I, it's going to be a little bit backed up because, you know, sure. I'm, I'm doing the piece for the quarters and cup, obviously. Um, I actually have a commission right here that I'm working yeah. on. It's based on the Jihad and the Crusade. And I kind of just started working on that one. Um, so that's that's a pretty big piece that's going to take a little bit. And then um, I have the piece that you commissioned me. And uh, and then I have a couple just artist proof commission type things. Um, and so another guy hit me up for an altar that I haven't taken on yet because I just have I, it's starting to get stacked up. But I would be down to take commissions as long as the client is down to wait, you know, because I so have, you have a you have a waiting. So, well, let's talk about that since you kind of spilled the beans about the course income. Um, oh, sorry. So, no, you're good. You're good. This is what this whole interview is kind of leading up to. Uh, so, yes, we uh, have commissioned you uh to uh, create a piece uh that will be a uh, star showcase and a first place prize uh for the courtesan a cup in june and yeah. uh in maryland and uh we're very excited and honored that you're working with us on it um it's interesting though i feel like you're uh you're becoming kind of the go-to artist uh for us to to come up with these commissions uh March of Immortals, uh, mystery piece behind you, and now the Quartz and Cup, a top prize, uh, original painting by you. Uh, so I mean, that's that's pretty cool. You're a very soft guy, and I can see you're you're, you're starting to create a wait a waiting list uh, for your work, which I'm very happy for you for that. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Those were a lot of kind words, and I'm really excited to work uh, with you on this piece for the Quartz and Cup. I think it's be really fun. Um, and yeah, this is definitely a good problem to have, to have some backup. Um, yeah, I mean, I love painting and I love the community and it's, uh, it's just really lucky that I can just paint and make people happy with my art and, you know, support a community of artists and gamers and collectors. That's awesome. It's my cool. people. <laughs> well, speaking of also the course and cup, I'm going to switch gears a little bit here, share my screen. And we're going to talk a little bit about a qualifying tournament uh, in Florida. And that is this right here. So we have a uh, Sorcery Contested Realms uh, qualify, a Corsica Cup qualifying event. Uh, I'm teaming up with Mystic Forge. Shout out to Mystic Forge. They're a fantastic LGS. Uh, they're a newer LGS. They started up a couple of years ago. They have a large clean facility um ample space i think we're gonna have space for uh, 54 players uh we have sold a bunch of tickets uh so definitely we have enough players for for a nice viable time uh, but we do still have uh more tickets available i'm gonna have the link in the description uh for this event you can go down to the description of this video uh, click on the link and purchase a ticket if you're interested we welcome anyone and everyone from wherever you don't have to be from Florida. Um, you can be from anywhere in the U.S., come down, and the top eight of this tournament will be invited, uh, and uh, tickets paid for the qualifier for the Corson Cup in June. So if you're trying to snag a seat, it's probably going to end up being the biggest uh, tournament, I think, of the year. So if you're trying to snag a seat of the 48 invites, uh, definitely uh, give this tournament a try. And uh, moving on to the actual event itself, the Sorcerer Spring Social, hosted by the Sorcerer Social Club, 89 days from now. This will be uh, June 14th through the 16th. It's going to be multi-day, 
huge event. Uh, they did update the venue location. Um, I believe they were going to be done uh, in No Land Beyond, uh, but now it has moved uh, to, I have it here, the Westin in Maryland. So the Westin BWI uh, Lithicum Heights. So in the description, I'll have the address, I'll have the date, and and I also have a link to this website. This website is pretty cool. They have here uh, ideas of where to stay, what is happening. Now, if you go to the website, you're going to see that they have four guest artists for sorcery. It's because uh, you, Troy, uh, were not announced prior to this interview. Uh, but now with you, you are artist number five. So there's going to be five sorcery artists in this event, which to me, that's going to be fantastic. It would be a great way to uh, pick up some prints, uh, maybe pick up some originals, pick up some some AP commissions, uh, as well as get your cards signed. Now, there's also going to be 50 draft events, 20 constructed events, and five sealed events. In addition to the 48 top uh, placing uh, players from all the qualifying tournaments. So definitely going to be a huge event. This place can, can seat up to 400 people. Um, you can buy tickets here. We have Jeff Mangus is also going to be there. Uh, Drew Tucker, Alan Pollock, and Tony, the king of the realm himself. So great sorcery uh, uh, artists are going to be there. There's also going to be uh, a bunch of sorcery uh, star-studded uh, appearances. We're, we're going to have uh, Steve Central Point, great artist if you want to get altars done. We're going to have Lindsay Lee. We're going to have Zach. He's going to be the head um, judge for the Course and Cup, which is great. Louis from Kitchen Table. Mike from Collector Art House. Zalem's going to be commenting, uh, commentating. Uh, Zalem's great in commentating. He's a great player, so he, he definitely knows uh, the ins and outs of, of what moves should happen, whether uh, whether he's piloting or not. Uh, Spin Scott's going to be there. Uh, so definitely going to be a very large uh, star-studded event, big capacity, and amazing top prizes. So uh, link in the description, check that out. Even if you're not a top eight uh, in one of the qualifiers, Still check out tickets for the other events and other games that are going to be happening that weekend. All right. And Truett is going to be there. So if you're a Truett fan, which I don't know if someone out there is going to be a bigger fan than me, but if you're a Truett fan, bring your cards, get your Alpha Foil Jihad signed by Truett. Uh, are you excited to be going? I'm very excited. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's like you said, it sounds like it just keeps growing and the popularity of sorcery keeps growing and it's going to be super fun, nice, big event. And uh, yeah, I'm going to play and I'll sign some cards and it's going to be a good time. It'll be good cool. to officially meet all these people that I've been hearing about and seeing. Around. Yeah. And uh, you got to save some time. I definitely want to play a match against you for sure. All right. We'll do it. We'll do it. All right. I'm not going to go easy on you just because I like <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Truett, we've covered all the uh, all the bases, all the events. We're super excited. You're going to go on uh, in June to uh, Maryland for the Course and Cup. I appreciate your time, and um, thanks for being with me. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Cool. All right. Uh, hell yeah. Sounds good, man. I appreciate you, um, and I'm excited to play against you. Yeah, for sure, man. That's cool. Hey, if you need help, what you can do is get TTS. And then right. get the sorcery. Um, sorcery has a TTS. We call it right. a mod. And then just hit okay. me up. We'll, we'll go on there and uh, we'll, we'll play some matches and walk through some All right. matches. All right. Hell yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I'll do that. All right. All right. Peace on me. Appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you too, man. See ya. All right. See ya.